you've ever been frustrated by foregrounds that are just so dang noisy and missing a lot of detail in your night photos, this is going to be a great video for you to check out. My name's Austin James Jackson. I'm a professional landscape photographer based here in the beautiful southern Utah area. In today's video, we are talking about blue hour blending your Milky Way photos. Now what blue hour blending is, is it takes a photo that you've shot during the blue hour, either just after sunset or just before sunrise, where it's kind of dark but not super dark yet, you're able to shoot that blue hour shot, which is your foreground exposure, at a much, much quicker shutter speed as well as lower ISO. Then you're gonna blend this with a night photo that you've taken later in the night, or maybe you've star tracked it, or you've stacked it, whatever it may be, and you're gonna combine those two photos together in order to create one photo. I'm gonna show you exactly how I merge that blue hour shot with the Milky Way photo. I'm gonna show you how to do it in a way that looks realistic, because I've seen a lot of bad blue hour blends where you can just tell that that blue hour shot was pasted in there and it just looks terrible. So I'm gonna show you there's three adjustment layers that I use in order to make this all happen, and I use a couple different tools for selecting the foreground versus the background. I'm gonna show you it all in this video. We're gonna go ahead and jump right into Photoshop and get right to it. Here we go, guys. So first thing is first here, you need to open your images in Photoshop. You can see here I have my foreground layer, which I will double click and call foreground. And I have my background layer, which I will call background, which is just the Milky Way. Now, if you're doing something like a focus stack, you're going to go ahead and do the focus stack before you do what I'm about to show you in this video, and then you will combine them into one layer like this after you've done the focus stack. It's so much easier to work with just two layers rather than three, four, or even five. Um, so once you have that done, do this foreground, background. You can name them if you want. I like to name them because I like to stay organized, but if you don't, that's fine. Now I wanna show you two different ways to do this because depending on what kind of photo you've got, uh, it may or may not work better one way or another. So the easiest way that you should always try first is by using what's called the quick selection tool, which is on my toolbar located over here. You can hit W to bring up the quick selection tool. Now what you're gonna do, uh, make sure that it's on plus is, and also make sure that you're selected on your blue hour layer and not your Milky Way layer. You're just gonna click and drag like this and you can see how the selection just snapped really nice. So I click and drag for a second there and then I just kind of start clicking because it will snap when you click. You can make the brush smaller. I'm using the um, opening bracket key, diagonal to the delete key. And I'm just fixing this up here a little bit clicking all the spots and you want to make sure you get stuff like this because it will look terrible if you don't. You can also come in here with a brush afterwards as well. I'm actually going to leave that one and I'll come in with a brush. And of course we want to hit all these holes. Normally you wouldn't have holes like this in a rock in your photo, but this pretty cool rock that I was shooting out in New Mexico did. So I wanted to use it as an example to show how you can use this tool to also grab this, these holes like this. And just like that, I think we are looking pretty good. So now I'm gonna go Command-0 or Control-0 on PC, zoom back out. And now what I can do is click on the layer mask button. And you can see now it's the opposite of what I want. I'm just gonna invert the layer mask, Command-I on Mac, Control-I on PC. A lot of people might be wondering why wouldn't I just select the foreground and I don't have to invert it. Um, I honestly just find it easier to select the sky so, and then invert the layer mask, but you can do it however you want. So now we've got this and you can see that it's looking decent. We've got a little bit of haloing, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and fix that. It's not too bad to fix. So what I wanna do here is um, you can try a few different things. One thing that usually doesn't work, but occasionally will is clicking on your layer mask under the properties tab here, go to select and mask. That'll take just a second to load here, but you can change the edge detection radius to like two or three pixels, or you can check smart radius as well if you want. You can hit okay and sometimes yeah, see, it made it worse on this photo, but sometimes it will fix it just a little bit. The other thing you can do under Select and Mask is if you're noticing, like mine, that there was the haloing going everywhere, you can actually shift the edge. Let's try like 20%. That might be too much. 
Um, but yeah, so you can see this is before, that's after we took away a little bit of halo. Let's go ahead and select and mask a little bit more. Let's do like 50% this time. There we go. So you can see that got rid of the halo pretty good there. So we got rid of that nasty little edge. So this is looking pretty good. Remember, we did have this one spot we wanted to hit. We can go in with a brush tool and clean that up. I'm going to grab my black brush here. Opacity, I'm going to bring up to 100. Make sure that my feather or my hardness, I mean, is at zero. Um, and for stuff like this, you may want to bring the hardness to like 50%. But for a small spot like this, I'm not all too terribly worried about it. That's looking pretty good to me. And okay, so now what you want to do in order to seamlessly blend these because it's like, in my opinion, at least pretty obvious that I didn't take these two photos together. Um, there's a couple different layers you want to use. And if the first thing before I try and blend these, I want to bring the Milky Way into place. So I've got my background layer here. Um, you can see the Milky Way is all the way down here. I took this as a tracked image, so I just put the Milky Way at the bottom, but I'm, I want to drag it up in this particular composition. So I'm going to hit Command T to transform the background. We're going to bring this all the way up. And at this point, I could move this around if, like, say I didn't shoot the Milky Way in the correct spot. Um, these two photos were not ones I planned to blend together. I just did it for this video. So this Milky Way is not shot on the same night or the same place or with this in mind. One thing I usually recommend to my clients is when you're tracking your images, always think about where the Milky Way needs to be in your frame. On this photo, it probably would have looked better to have the Milky Way like over here, um, but that's not going to work with this photo that I'm using right now. So we're just going to roll with the punches here and run this somewhere in there, just like that. For the sake of this video, doesn't matter too much just because I'm just showing you how to blend this seamlessly. So now what we want to do here in order to blend these is we need to match these two photos so that they look like they belong together. The way I like to do that is to adjust the foreground to match the sky. So what I'm going to do is bring up three adjustment layers here. Those three adjustment layers are going to be curves. They're going to be hue saturation. It's going to be color balance. Now you're going to select this curves layer here. Click on this box with a down arrow. That's going to make it so it only applies to the foreground. And you're going to do that to the other two layers as well. Now, first thing that I usually like to do is just drop the hue saturation. This photo is not that saturated, so it's probably not all that necessary. Um, but for those of you that have photos of, say, like flowers or something that is colorful, you got to drop the saturation because night photos don't look realistic when you've got like these super vibrant colors in the foreground. They should be pretty dull and muted because it's dark, at least if you want your image to look more realistic. If you don't care, then leave it. The saturation doesn't matter. Totally up to you, though. Um, the other thing you want to do is adjust the color balance. This image actually looks pretty good already. But what you would use this for is like, say that the tones were like way too magenta or something. You would want to match the two, the foreground and the sky, so that they have a similar uh, color cast to them or lack of color cast, whatever you're going for. I feel like right there is pretty good for me. I got rid of that like warm cast and put a little cool cast on to match the sky. Lastly, we're going to use curves here. I like to just click and drag from the center and just darken this up a little bit. Again, what I'm going for here is a realistic look. Now, the at the final edit of my image, I'm going to want this to be brighter, but right now I want it to just look like I shot this in one exposure. So I want this to be dark because obviously um, this wouldn't have this wouldn't be super like bright if I actually shot this as a Milky Way exposure. You know what I'm saying? So you can bring this up later, but what you want to do is bring it down uh, for the time being just to kind of match things up. And you can always bring back that detail later. So this is looking pretty good to me. At this point, if I wanted to make any other adjustments, I could. These are usually the only three adjustments I use. I would go ahead and hit Command, Alt, Option, Shift, and E and go ahead and merge that into one layer on top. And now I have my base layer. I would name this base, and I would start editing from right here. Super simple, quick, and easy.
So if this way of blending your image doesn't work, there's one other thing that you can do, and it's a little bit more complex and complicated, but it's something that's nice to know how to do if you've got a little bit more complicated photo that you wanna blend, like there, say there's trees or something that's really difficult to mask. So what you're gonna do is actually go up to select, down to color range, and you are going to probably either hit highlights or selected colors. You can try highlights first. Now what I'm looking for is, actually this is gonna work really nicely on this image I think, is a nice contrast of the horizon line. So what this is doing essentially is it is going to be creating a selection which we're gonna use as a mask. You can see how it's doing a nice job selecting the sky versus the rock. So I'm selecting highlights. Uh, conversely, you could just select shadows. Like I mentioned before, I like doing highlights because it just, it works for me, it works for my brain, but then you of course have to invert the mask. Not a big deal for me, just one additional step. Um, so you want to create, uh, you want this foreground to be black and the sky to be white or opposite. Um, and I'm not worried about stuff like this down here because I can always paint that. I just want to create a nice hard contrast along the edge here. This is looking pretty good to me. And I could drag this out if I wanted, but I think that that is looking pretty good. And normally I would probably do it like this and just paint the bottom, but I'll show you guys a pretty cool trick here that you can use if you've got like some grays like that. So you're gonna go ahead and hit okay. Then you're gonna go ahead and hit the layer mask button, apply as a layer mask, and you're gonna invert command I on Mac, control I on PC. Now you can see the problem with this is we've got this junk going on here. So look directly at the layer mask, hold Alt and Option and click this. Now grab your brush tool here, make the size like fairly bigger. Let's go a little bit larger. Uh, the opacity at 100 and I wanna change the blend mode of my brush to overlay. Now this is really important here. Make sure that it's the blend mode of your brush and not your layer. The blend mode of the brush is gonna be in the top menu bar over here. Change this to overlay and then you're going to paint just like this. Now, can you see how when I paint, I'm painting over this whole central area, but it's only applying paint to the spots that are already partially black. So the way the overlay blend mode works with the brush tool, it'll only adjust colors that are not perfectly black or perfectly white. So it makes it a really great tool for refining your edges and coming in here, hitting stuff like this, because I don't have to worry about painting over the edge. Just like that, it looks good. And then I could come in with white here and touch that up. And if I needed to, I could change it back to normal and touch up anything else. And I'll touch up the top. I'll switch it back to normal to touch up the top because I'm not that worried about this very top of the image because it's not close to any edges. So I'm not gonna have to worry about painting over like I would if I went in down here and did any painting. So that looks pretty good to me. Now we'll go back once again. You can see it's looking great, and we actually, by using this method, which you could see is a little bit more advanced, we actually avoided all that ghosting, um, that haloing that we had last time. So that's huge because then it saves us one extra step. I don't always see that haloing. Occasionally I do. That was This was one photo where it was. Usually you see that in photos where the exposure um, is probably a little too bright during the blue hour, but of course not a big deal. You can fix it. Then again here, you would use the same three layers. I'm gonna go hue, saturation, color balance, and curves. And I would do the same thing. I'd maybe, oh, and I would hit the down arrow, of course. I'd drop the hue, saturation. I would increase the blues a little bit. And then I would darken it up. And there you have it. Once again, you're going to merge all visible, Command, Alt, Option, Shift, and E on a Mac. That'd be Control, Option, Shift, E on a PC. And then we have our background base layer. And now you're good to apply the rest of your Milky Way edits. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. We really hope it was helpful for you guys. If you have any other questions or you have some techniques you like yourself, let me know down in the comments below. I love hearing from you guys. And as always, if this video helped you, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. It continues to help me to grow my channel to help you guys become better photographers. That's always my goal. Thank you guys so much for checking out this week's video. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.